Well, hello and welcome back, and thanks for coming back. We're at Paphos Airport, if you're curious to know where the starting point is. I've just dropped off one of my customers, who just happens to be a friend as well. All of my customers are pretty good friends with me, and I'm pretty good friends with them. And uh, sometimes I like to help them, shall we say. And uh, he has now flown off, and he's actually going off to Dusseldorf in Germany. Yeah, he's a British guy but he's off to Dusseldorf, then he's going to Hungary is where he's going, and he's going to manage a oil refinery plant somewhere in downtown Hungary. Anyway, without further ado, here we go. We've just come through the drop-off area, and this is the exit that we're rapidly going to approach. So the idea of this video is to show you the route from Paphos Airport to the downtown Kedo Paphos Beach Hotels, which we understand most of the people who are coming to Cyprus for a holiday are gonna stay. Well, you're gonna stay in and around somewhere in the downtown Kedo Paphos area, probably. So this video, hopefully, will be of interest. This is the route that the bus will take you on, the taxi will take you on, and if you're hiring a car or borrowing a car, or stealing a car, as I say, this is the route that you should go on. And if you don't, the odds are you're gonna get lost. So stick with me. Now, I'm gonna just jibber and jabber as we go, because I thought maybe we'll give you like an update on the channel as we drive, and you can absorb the views and the spectacality and the route as we go. And I'll give you a bit of an update on what's going on on the channel known as Marika and me. Uh, people who follow the channel regularly understand that Marika is not with us at the moment. She is in Tbilisi. Uh, she has laid her father to rest, who unfortunately passed away on New Year's Eve. And uh, anyway, the job has been done, as she says, and the task has been accomplished, and he has been sent on his way. And she'll be returning with the baby Labouf, that's Miss Ella, in the next few days, shall we say. So she'll be appearing live and giving her little part to the channel, should we say. She is definitely 50%, that is for sure, and probably a lot more. Now, I thought that I would tell you a little bit about our lives, tell you how long I've been in Cyprus, how long Marika has been in Cyprus, uh, what she earns, what I earn, what do we spend our money on, what the bills are, and that kind of thing. So, we'll kick off with Marika. She has been in Cyprus now for 20, two years yep quite a long time she's been breathing the Cypriot air for 22 years which is why she doesn't like to stop at red traffic lights and she likes to talk on a mobile phone while she drives and adjust the flip-flops and smoke a cigarette and eat a pork kebab so there you go that's how long she's been here mr. Paul well I came here in August 2008 the 15th of August 2008 was when myself and my brother arrived and we brought with us the one and only Mr. Smadley Wild, and he was my superstar brown Havana chocolate Siamese cat, and his name was Smadley Wild, or Smad for short, or Smad Cat, greatest cat to have ever walked the planet Earth, and there's no doubt about that. And he retired to Cyprus in August 2008, and fortunately he left this planet in December 2009, but. Uh, he did an awful lot of sunbathing, and uh, he had a fabulous life. As they say, the brightest and sharp, bright, sharp, this is my English, Marika's telling me English. As they say, the brightest star shines the brightest, but unfortunately doesn't live the longest of lives. And that was the story of Smadley Wild, greatest cat that ever lived, place in my heart until the day I die. And I hope, and I really, really hope, that I do meet him in the next life, because we were the greatest friends. And it brings a tear to my eye every time I talk about him. Anyway, on to the task. We are heading from the Paphos Airport to the downtown Kedah Paphos area, the hotel area, Pasadonis Avenue, to give it its correct title, although we will call it the Hotels Road, and it makes far more sense to us, if you understand, because, well, yours and my Greek is not that good. Uh, we've only come here for the sun and the sea and uh, the cheaper cost of living, shall we say, although it's not that cheap to live in Cyprus, just so you understand. Anyway. Back to it, what does Marika earn? Well, what would you think she earns? She mixes paints is what she does. She's got the technical term of a technical colorist. So she 
mixes paint for cars. So basically car body shops give her paint coats, or more often than not, don't give her a paint coat because they're too stupid to be able to find it on the car. So either she has to go and get it or they bring her a piece of that car and then she has to colour match and make that paint. Obviously there's a computer involved, but more often than not it's not as simple as that and then you have to start mixing it by eye. Then she helps you choose what other bits and bobs you might want, like fillers and putties and sanding papers and sanding machines and polishing machines and polishing compounds. I think you get the idea. She works in a shop which sells all the paints and peripherals that go with it to the body shop trade. See, you're seeing the link now of how we met, perhaps, before the channel. So, what does she earn? Well, I'll be blatantly honest with you, she doesn't earn enough. But, of course, you probably all think that about your wives. She earns €1,200 Euros a month, plus or minus a euro. There's a little bit of commission here and there, so sometimes just under and sometimes just over. You heard me correctly, €1,200 Euros a month. That's what she gets paid, which is enough, because... Luckily for her, without trying to blow my own trumpet, I don't need any of her money. So her money is her money. She does with it what she wishes. And uh, whether you understand or not, she sends quite a lot of her money back to Georgia. Because, well, between the two of us, we're the ones that keep the family in Georgia afloat. Now you understand how it works. So a lot of people in Cyprus are the same. They come here to earn more money because obviously she earns much more money here than she would do in Georgia. Okay, so that's the reason why Marika was here to start with. And uh, she used to work two jobs. If you go hunting back through our earlier videos, you'll hear me talk about this. She did used to do two jobs. The woman used to work 18 hours a day. Don't start me off on her first husband because execution, way too good for him. So anyway, he's left the planet. Well, he hasn't left the planet, but he's left the country because this country is not big enough for him and for me. So he was a wise man, got on a plane and buggered off. Right, now, what does Mr. Paul earn? Uh, perhaps everyone's curious to know what does he earn? Well, in and around 4,000 euros a month, about a thousand a week. If Marika was sitting here, she'd say that's not possible. And um, what she would mean is, she says, will you spend more? Yeah, I do. I spend more than a thousand a week. I do have another little income from somewhere else, a couple of rental properties and a few other bits and bobs that I've gathered over the years because I'm old. And uh, there we go, that's how it works. So I approximately earn 4,000 and a bit of chump change a month. And I know that's quite a good income, but it doesn't go very far because things, as I've said in Cyprus, are not as cheap as you think they may be. Miss Andrea, my price checker, she always is checking the price of my blue, blue, blue athletic shoes, trainers, sports shoes, whatever you choose to call them. And as she keeps pointing out to me, whenever I buy a pair of blue shoes, they are roughly costing one and a half times and sometimes twice the price of what they would be in the UK. T-shirts, twice the price. Jeans, twice the price. Um, all these kind of things. Baseball caps, twice the price. Sunglasses, sometimes a bit cheaper, sometimes a bit more expensive. Uh, benzene, a little bit cheaper. Cars, much, much more expensive. Uh, what else is there? Well, bills. Let's go to household bills, shall we? So you get an insight into how much it might cost you if you want to come to Cyprus to live. Um, this is uh, something that was mentioned to me by uh, David uh, the other day, and of course Richard, who's come on board, has mentioned it. And uh, he lived in sea caves for a couple of years, so I understand it, with his wife Julie. And uh, he said, why don't you point out some of the realities of life in Cyprus? Because, yeah, it's paradise, don't get me wrong, but it's not paradise seven days of the week. It's only paradise for about six and a half days a week. Did you hear that, Dawn, as you're sitting there eating your breakfast? Sean, see? Temperature today, 21 and a half degrees, just after lunch. Sun beaming down, yes, it is. But we do have bills as well. Anyway, back to the uh, conversation. The bills. What do we pay in bills? So shall we start off with mobile phones? There we go. 
I have four mobile contracts in my name. So I've got two for myself, one for Marika and one for my brother. Those are the four mobile phones that I run. They have unlimited phone calls, unlimited internet, unlimited data, messaging, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to take a left here. And we're going to go onto the purpose-built road that takes you down to the Cato Paphos Harbour, as it says on the sign, eight kilometres. Right, back to the conversation. Four mobile phone contracts, and they're the unlimited ones, if you understand. So minutes, mobile, data, all that. Much as you want. Uh, even international calls, but they will be billed after it goes over to 50 minutes or something like that. Anyway, what do they cost? Well, I pay 120-ish euros per month for those four contracts. So that roughly translates to 30 euros per contract. So I don't know what yours is in the UK, but that's what they are. 30 euros a month on the network called Primetel, which I've never had a problem with in the last five years. Whenever I want to make a phone call, it works. Whenever I want internet, it works. So it's good enough for us. And they work when we go abroad and all that kind of thing. So 30 euros a month is what that costs. Next bill, water bill. There we go. Water bills in Cyprus come out every two or three months. I'm not quite sure. But you don't have to pay them very often, I know that, they're not very strict. But if we break it down to a monthly cost, they will be in and around 20 euros a month through the normal months of the year, and then through the peak of the year, which is the summer months, so May, June, July, August and September. You know, a bit of rocket science involved now. Water evaporates, so therefore the water in the pool needs to be filled up. So our bill goes up. And that bill for those particular months will be say 50 to 60 euros a month so overall if we average it out our water ball ball she's still on my english again our water bill is probably shall we say 40 euros a month there we go to make it very very simple and we do wash quite often and uh, we do shower quite often don't like to be dirty and i do like to change my underpants and my socks so don't worry justine and uh, what's the next one? Next one will be whatever you want to call it these days, council tax, poll tax, I don't know what you call it in the UK. All countries have this fee that's charged by the municipality and either annually or monthly. Now in Cyprus we pay a one-off fee and that one-off fee for most people is about 160 euros a year. Yeah, correct. 160 euros a year so what's that that's around about 25 euros a month so that's what we pay 25 euros a month for our rubbish collection street lights and street maintenance and police driving around and that sort of stuff should we say what's next um, hmm. well if you're going to rent a property to give you an idea if you wanted to rent a one-bedroom apartment in downtown Paphos not in the best area, but not in the worst area, so a mid-area, uh, in a mid-type of resort, probably with a swimming pool, you would probably pay about 450 a month to 500 euros a month for that apartment. Two-bedroom apartment, probably going to cost you around about six to 650. If you wanted a villa in downtown Paphos, you know, a house, townhouse, three bedrooms, probably going to cost you about 650, 700 a month. If you went to some of the hot spots like Tala, Peya, and you wanted to rent a three bedroom villa detached with a swimming pool, you're probably going to be talking around about a thousand euros a month. Uh, and obviously, there are man many villas are much, much more than that. I've given you what you possibly could find if you looked under all the rocks and all the stones about a thousand euros a month. So that's Paphos. Now, those figures, I understand, if you're watching from London area, seem quite cheap. But remember, the salaries, as I've just told you, are not London salaries. Most people in Paphos, and I mean most, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but I mean most. Most people you meet in shops, in McDonald's, in Burger King, working in the Mall, uh, working in the petrol stations. Most people that you come into contact, if you understand me, will earn somewhere between 800 euros, you heard me correctly, 800 euros a month, up to maybe 15, 1600 euros a month. Like I say, Marika's got a pretty good job and she enjoys weekends off and public holidays and all that kind of stuff. 
always makes me laugh every time she says it. She earns 1,200 euros a month. Uh, when you move into the higher echelons of society, shall we say, if you worked on the tills in a bank, you're doing around 14, 15, 1600 euros, depends on your length of service. If you really move up into the higher echelons of society and you get to work for the water board, shall we say, the electricity board, those kind of companies. Remember, these companies are state owned, so you're working for a Quango, you're probably going to earn around about 2000 euros a month, so the salaries have gone up. Get into local government, they're going to go up a little bit. And when you get to be an MP, the real cream de la creme, you get to earn about four to five thousand a month. But of course, then you get to do every fiddle you possibly can employ your daughter, get a chauffeur, get a benzene allowance, get a food allowance, get a clothing allowance. You get the message. Same anywhere in the world. If I come back in the next life, I know what I want to be a politician. As many people have told me, I can talk the panties offer well i'll shut up now we're a family channel but there you go but i know what i want to be a politician you don't need to get to the top of that tree to become a multi multi millionaire even if you're only at the grassroots and you're a little bit dirty and a little bit corrupt you can do very very well indeed so when i come back i'm going to be a grassroots politician and uh, well god help the world if i ever get to the top shall we say now where are we right in front of us that is the one and only Olympic Lagoon Hotel. There we go. So we've arrived at our destination a bit sooner than I said, and hopefully you've enjoyed the bit of gibbering and the bit of jabbering. I'm going to talk now about where the channel wants to go. Now, a lot of people will understand that we are a Paphos based channel, but we're not a Paphos based channel, if you understand. The channel's name is Marika and Me, and as the channel suggests, it's about Marika and me wandering around various parts of the world. As it happens, Marika and me met in Paphos, and as it happens, we live in Paphos. But that doesn't mean that the channel is actually about Paphos. We are slowly, hopefully, hooking you in to us, Marika and me. She's the most beautiful woman in the world, fascinating woman, very, very intelligent, very, very clever, a professor of Russian literature, speaks seven languages fluently, English is but her worst, and on top of all those languages, she then is able to converse quite well in Bulgarian, Romanian, Hungarian. Very, very talented lady. And uh, what do I do? Car body shop, car mechanics. And in a couple of years, hopefully, I will have amassed a small fortune, a very, very small fortune indeed. And you never know, I might be able to retire. And the plan is, of course, to go off on our travels. Hence the title, Marika and me. And the plan at the moment is to go off around the Greek islands. So Crete, Rhodes, Corfu, Kos, and also we may frequent Turkey, some of the beautiful coastal areas in Turkey, like Bodrum and uh, Marmaris, and various other places along that coastline. Uh, because we are a channel that doesn't want to go to colder climates, shall we say. We understand that uh, we want to stay warm and we understand that uh, most of our viewers are attracted to the sunshine and the blue blue sky and the blue blue Mediterranean Sea. So that's the last hotel or the first hotel depending on which way you're coming. And we're going to drive out to the Rikos beach because I'd like to give you a truly true spectacular view out across that blue blue Mediterranean Sea. Hopefully you've come to understand a little bit more about Marika and me and uh, hopefully Slowly but surely you become hooked to us. And if there's somewhere you'd like us to go, please let us know. If there's something you'd like us to talk about, please again let us know. We don't mind opening up. It's our life. And uh, we're going to show you all the warts that are on it as well. And of course there aren't that many warts because as I've said, we do live in paradise. We do have a fantastic relationship. I love her dearly and I know that she loves me the same. And uh, we have the baby Labouf, Marika's daughter. She's not actually my daughter, but uh, she has opened her arms up to me slowly. And now we are the greatest of friends. She understands that uh, her mother went through a certain part of her life. And, uh, well, that life was not to include Miss Ella's father anymore, shall we say. That's what we will say on that subject. And uh, I didn't steal Marika from 
her father. Marika left her father and I was just the one that picked up the pieces and put her back together. And uh, it's a sad subject, but uh, it's a subject that sometimes we have talked about in the past. He was not the nicest of men, he was not the greatest of men. He was quite a good father, I think. Well, perhaps all daughters believe the fathers are good. My opinion on him is, well, not very high, shall we say. It's not possible for him to be and stand within 50 metres of each other. Well, put it this way, he starts running. Uh, anyway, there we go. That's the, the nasty side of Mr. Paul, shall we say. But uh, there are many men out there who understand what I'm talking about. Uh, one of our friends, John the Barn Hawk, he understands what I'm talking about. And his wife Louise understands what I'm talking about. And I know there's many men out there who understand what I'm talking about. A man who raises a fist to a woman, uh, you better run. You might think you're a big man, but you're not. Anyway, that's the darker side, shall we say, but uh, that's not her life anymore. Her life now, as she tells me, she says that uh, she was a drowning little kitten and a man called Mr. Paul came along and saved her. And, uh, it always makes a tear come to my eye whenever she says that. And sometimes she does sit at night and uh, tell me about some of the past that she had. But that's in the past, shall we say. So, uh, right, on to the channel, Marika and me. Hopefully we can become the greatest YouTube channel in the world. Probably not, probably not. Um, but we don't want to be the greatest YouTube channel in the world. What we want is to be able to survive off it and travel around sunny climates. And we like to take all of our family with us and take you and show you places and our adventures and keep you involved as much as we possibly can. So a big shout out to some of our superstars, Dame Anne, who's now been promoted to Her Majesty by Jeremy. As you may have noticed, Jeremy, you're not a mister anymore, although your brother is now a sir. So we've got Sir Simon, um, Lord Dave Jono, Sir Ritchie, we wish you all the best and we thank you for staying with us. And we have many, many new superstars, that's what we've got with us. I can't name everybody, I really, really can't. You're all in my heart and you're all in my mind. And I love it when you come back, Bruce and Angela. You don't have to watch every video we've ever made. You don't have to feel sorry that you missed the fact that um, Marika's father passed away. Uh, that's not what it's about. The fact that you're there for us means a lot. Thanks very much. And we hope to see you very, very soon. Anyway, it's that time. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, Hit the like, click subscribe, and please come back for a little bit more of my insanity. And uh, I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks very much.